Audi is one of the world's best-selling luxury car manufacturer. It's a brand with a strong racing history that combines, I would say, elegant designs with athletic performances. And one of their best-known cars of all time is, of course, the Audi R8. And that's the car we're gonna talk about in this video. The Audi R8 is based on Frank Lamberty's and Julian Honig's Audi Le Mans Quattro concept car. The vehicle was launched at the 2003 International Geneva Motor Show and three years later on September 30th 2006 the groundbreaking R8 road car was unveiled at the Paris Auto Show. The elegant look of the Audi R8 comes from the contrast between its smooth and flowing surfaces which creates this tension in the body. And the body surfaces are stretched between the car's key lines and edges, making a muscular sculpture with great balance and play between concave and convex surfaces. One line that I really love on the Audi R8 is the shoulder line, and that draws attention to the wheel arches, which in typical Audi design fashion are signs of the Quattro all-wheel drive system. From any angle, the R8 looks like it's tensing its muscles ready to launch like a sprinter in the starting blocks. It did get a couple of facelifts during its lifetime from 2007 to 2005. Actually, it got one facelift and I'm gonna show you the differences and which one I prefer in just a second. One of the main design elements of the R8 is the iconic side blade. It not only sends cool air to the engine, which of course is crucial, but it also visually divides the car into two parts. You have the greenhouse, and then it's divided by the side blade, and then you have the engine bay. And for the first time ever on an Audi, the four rings of the logo are not inside of the front grille, but rather above it. The Audi R8 was the first car in the world to use light emitting diodes for all of its lighting needs. And because of this, the design of the car had to be just as innovative. In the rear, Audi gave this full LED taillights of the R8 a three-dimensional look no matter what angle you view them from. And it's a really cool design detail. The first Audi R8 was equipped with the 4.2 liter V8 engine capable of producing 420 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. The same engine was used in the Audi B7 RS4, but it was lubricated with a dry sump system. Audi revealed an updated version of the R8 in December of 2008, and that was the R8 V10. And this model was powered by a 5.2 liter FSI engine that produced over 100 horsepower more than the V8, 532 horsepower, and 391 pound-feet of torque. This allowed the car to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles per hour in just 3.9 seconds and reach a top speed of 197 miles per hour, 316 kilometers per hour. Also in 2008, Audi showed off something really special, the Audi R8 TDI Le Mans concept. And this monster was the first ever road-going sports car with a 12-cylinder diesel engine and the six-cylinder diesel V12 produced 500 horsepower and 738 pound-feet of torque at a low 1,750 RPMs. On August 8, 2008, pictures of a convertible R8 Spider seen filming scenes from the Iron Man 2 were posted online. The images revealed a clearly visible retractable roof, but the Spider lacked a very important graphic feature of the coupe, the familiar side blade. The vehicle was officially unveiled in 2009 at the Frankfurt Motor Show with additional chassis support, two rollover safety bars, a subtle change such as the positioning of the fuel filler, and the Spider was powered by the same 5.2 liter V10 engine as the coupe. And two years later, Audi announced the completion of the 4.2 liter FSI V8 powered R8 Spider, capable of sprinting from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 4.8 seconds and reaching a top speed of 185 miles per hour or 299 kilometers 
per hour. The V8 model, like the V10 Spider, had an automatic pull-out folding cloth roof and an aluminum space frame with carbon components. The all-electric Audi e-tron concept was introduced in 2009. This was a smaller version of the R8 Coupe with four electric motors producing 313 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. Although it had a very tight looking design and package, the e-tron concept was never put into production. Between 2010 and 2013, Audi focused on producing the R8 GT, which was to be limited to only 333 units worldwide. This limited edition R8 Coupe lost 100 kilos in overall weight and had the V10 tuned to 552 horsepower, giving it a top speed of 199 miles per hour or 320 kilometers per hour with a zero to 60 time in 3.6 seconds. And of course, they had to drop an R8 GT Spider. And this was introduced in 2011, was also limited to 333 units, had a retractable roof and a price tag of $231,863. 19-inch wheels, satellite navigation, red brake calipers, an interior ambient lighting package, a premium Bang & Olufsen sound system, and several other new features. What I'm gonna do now is show you the front side and rear and compare the 2016, the current generation Audi R8 to my favorite R8 of all time when it comes to design and that is the facelifted first generation. So let's have a look at what's going on here and why I prefer the older generation because if you look at this, look at all the lines and all the creases and angles that we have in chamfers that goes on in the front end. It feels a lot busier in the front end, a lot sharper and less emotional and less exotic, less Italian in the front end. This is a lot more, uh, I would say, British styling or German styling in combination with some new elements that they're trying to do in this uh, wing here, for example, making it look more in line with the Lamborghini's design language. And then we have a curvature here that kind of clashes with these angles right here in sharp corner seats. A lot going on in the front end, but look at the previous generation R8 and just the harmony in this design. Such a clean design. We have all the graphic features lining up with each other. The headlights going into the top of the grille, and then we have this brand new which LED that takes this design and makes it a modern car compared to the old diodes that you have in the in the first generation and the pre-facelift R8. I think the side view is probably the view where you can see this uh, the most. I also want to show you quickly the uh, the concept and how well the concept, the Le Mans concept, transformed into the production version right here. So you see not a lot of big changes. We still have the same kind of graphic features in the same position as the concept. Now just being a little bit more refined going into production, obviously. So let's have a look at the side view. And also here we have the concept the to production. You can see that it's essentially the exact same car. I feel like the production is maybe even stretched out a little when it comes to the wheelbase. I'm not sure if it has the same wheelbase as the concept, but still a very good transition from the concept to production. So let's have a look at the 2016, compare it to the old generation. And it all has to do with this line right here. This roof line, as you can see in the current generation, it goes right back down into the very end of the deck lid. It never crashes in earlier and then creates a bit of a trunk in the rear. And I think that's a mistake because to me that makes it look, if I were to take the silhouette of this uh, 2016 R8, it feels like a Noble and a Noble is a lesser car <laughs> when it comes to qu build quality and also, in my opinion, a lesser car when it comes to design, specifically comparing it to the uh, first generation R8. What I love about this is that we have the Quattro. This is one of these rules that Audi have. When you have a Quattro four-wheel drive car, you need to have these uh, curvatures right above both axles to symbolize that it is a four-wheel drive car. And you can look look at the greenhouse here and the roof line, how it goes, and then it kind of goes down before the end of the car and then creates this nice upswing in the rear end creating this trunk area, which I think looks a lot better than having one line that goes right down 
and all the way to the end uh, of the car. This is a more static design, while this is a more emotional and dynamic, fluid design. And I think that's what Walter de Silva meant when he said that this is a combination of an Italian exotic and a German functionality and comfort in the design. And I also love this angle we have in the rear end, a little bit less of an angle in the new version. Another detail that's very different in the 2016 is the side blade. So the side blade now is separated into two pieces. I wish they would have kept the side blade in one section like we have in the first generation because this now creates a clear separation between the engine bay and the greenhouse. And here, now it seems like it's confused and it doesn't really know what he, want, what he wants to do. And in addition, we don't have a sharp shoulder line like we have in the previous first generation uh, Audi R8 down here. And what this does, it, it, it creates a lack of tension. It create, it's almost like a structural um, component is gone from the design when you remove this shoulder line that we have in the first generation. Now looking at the rear, this is probably the best view for me for the 2016 R8. I really like what they did with the graphics here. I think it's a beautiful looking rear end with all of these intakes and also a bit more advanced design or styling when it comes to the lower part of the diffuser and the exhaust as you can see right here and we also have two tone which i'm not sure i'm a huge fan of i would probably want to have this part black just like we have in the diffuser and that creates too much confusion when you look at this design but still i don't think it compares <laughs> same thing here i'm just a huge fan of the first generation R8 because this has a lot more elegance to it. Just look at the integration of the tailpipes. Here we have a square where the oval sits within a big massive chamfer around this square and here it just sits nicely almost melted into the body of the car. It just looks a lot cleaner, a lot more elegant than it does in the new generation up here. Same thing with the diffuser and the integration of that. A simple chamfer right above it, right here, to visualize that it's it's a separate piece that it is meant to be, that that is the positioning of the, of the diffuser. And then we have this nice curvature, the downward curvature that uh, creates the top uh, border of the rear end graphics. I love this curvature and how it then goes in and frames the rest of the graphics in a very simple and elegant way like this with these big air outlets in the rear end, typical for the Audi R8. Last but not least, let's have a look at the interior. And this is probably the the uh, uh, version or the upgrade that I think I prefer <laughs> the new 2016. What I love about both of these is that it's super driver oriented, this cockpit. You see we have this carbon fiber framing going all around the uh, gauge cluster and into almost the, the floor down here, into the doors. And we have the same treatment in the new version and what I like about the new version is that it doesn't just have a it, this is a fully digital display inside the gauge cluster but I don't mind it since it has a nice cozy housing for it and we don't even have an infotainment screen in the center console which I think is great because if we don't need it we can put it right in here in this big display this display can be every everything we need for when it comes to information we can all have all of that in the gauge cluster and just clean up this area but we still have tactile buttons for the climate controls which I also love in the new generation and not just have touch pads all over the place so in this case I would definitely prefer the old body with maybe the new interior I think that's a impossible thing to do but if I had my dream Audi it would be the second generation facelifted with the 2016 interior